what's going on friends welcome back to another episode of the stew on this podcast i hope you had an amazing weekend and hopefully you're looking forward to this week hopefully you guys something amazing planned our family uh our girls are heading into spring break so we are going to be spending time with each other this week and just very much looking forward to that obviously as you can tell um by the time that this releases, I'm really hoping that the Longhorns made it into the Final Four and on their way to a national championship uh, next weekend. And if not, congratulations to Miami and you Miami fans, y'all deserve it. But I'm still hoping for that Texas win. Um, hey, wanted to come at you today with this episode. Um, so a few months back, I don't know, maybe back in the fall, I uh, wrote a blog where I was talking about how... Um, I can see personally, I can see um, God's amazing love shining through my failures as a parent. And um, when I wrote this, what I was really talking about was uh, there are moments where my three-year-old daughter, Micah, can just really push the limits when it comes to my temper and my patience and all that kind of stuff. Um we've always joked about that. She's always been practicing ahead of schedule for each new phase of life. So you, you hear about the terrible twos and the terror threes and all that kind of stuff. Well, Michael always seems to be about, oh, I don't know, six months ahead of schedule where um, when she was one and a half, she really started to push a limit on like not listening and freaking out over things and, and whatnot. And when she was two and a half turning three, um, she really started to press into that. I'm not going to listen to you anymore and this defiance and all that kind of stuff. Um, and because of a toddler doing what a toddler does, there are moments where I just lose my cool and I lose my temper and I blow up on her. And I mentioned in that blog that uh, it's in those moments. I also see when I do blow up, I see how it just breaks Micah. Um, I watched like tears well up, swell up in her eyes. And, and it's in those moments where I'm just like, dude, I suck as a dad. Um, I feel like a failure. My daughter deserves better than this. And my daughter deserves better than me. And the reality is I do understand that a lot of those emotions, a lot of those feelings are something that every single parent has probably dealt with at some point in time in their life, just because <clears throat> We have this thing called sin that wants us to experience our own selfishness and we want our own comfort and our own desires. And when our toddlers are acting as toddlers, um, sometimes that doesn't quite fit into that mold and it pushes it pushes things to the limits. It, it just pushes us to a point where we say things and we do things and we yell at our kids and um, we don't mean to. And it leaves us feeling like, man, I'm a horrible parent. So my guess is that you can probably relate to that. And what I realized in that moment was that there are just times in that, um, that God's love for me really shines through in my failures. Because while I'm losing my cool with my daughter, who is really just diving into her own self, if you will, like we don't have to teach kids to be sinful. It's just part of who they are. It's part of who you and I are. Like we don't have to teach that. So while Mike is diving into her own desires and, you know, doing her own things and learning, you know, I understand that, that she's learning as she's growing, doing her own thing. Um, when I blow up, I, what I'm reminded is like, I too am sinful and I to do my own thing and I rebel against my heavenly father on a constant basis and yet he doesn't blow up on me and uh it's in those moments where I'm like dude how cool and how great and how loving and how gracious is our God so I set that up um I'll drop the link to that blog in this episode if you want to go and read it but I set all that up just to really talk about really what I am centering uh this podcast episode on you see when Micah was um probably about that year and a half time frame, she started doing something that really threw Melissa and I for a loop. Um, she started to uh, pull her hair and we didn't really understand why she was doing this. Um, we didn't know um, like what was the cause of all this. What we did notice, however, was that it was really kind of associated with thumb sucking. So it was kind of like a comfort thing for her. So she would suck her thumb to soothe herself to sleep. And in the process of it, she would be like twirling her finger in her hair and as it's getting twirled around she would pull at it um well she did this for so long that my daughter who had this beautiful hair that was growing in she was pretty much bald um at one point and it was devastating 
for Melissa and I to watch. Like nothing that we did, nothing that we said ever convinced Micah not to do it. Um, and so there would be nights where we put her down to sleep and we would have the monitor up. And what would we see? But our daughter laying in bed, sucking her thumb and twirling her hair. And so we started the process of trying to break her out of the habit of sucking her thumb for two reasons, right? One, we don't want her pulling her hair. And two, we obviously don't want her to mess up her teeth where she would have to get into braces or anything. Um, so we started working on trying to break that habit. Um, all that being said, like we prayed about this and we were asking other people for advice, help, and all those kinds of things. And eventually Micah just kind of grew out of it. There came a point where there wasn't really much for her to grab a hold of and pull onto. And so she kind of worked herself out of doing it. Um, there was some like guided misdirection that we gave her. Like we have a blanket that we told her like, Hey, if you're ever feeling the urge that you need to pull on something, pull on the threads of this blanket. And so we thought that we had broken this habit because her hair started growing back in and it's thick, long, beautiful, all those kinds of good things. Um, but uh, a few months back, uh, we were getting Micah up out of bed, and as we were walking up the stairs to our living room, um, I just I was looking at her hair, and I was just like, "Man, that that spot looks really thinned out right now." Um, <clears throat> and as Melissa was doing Micah's hair, getting her ready for school, Melissa was also noticing that it seemed like there was uh, pieces of hair, like there was a section of hair that was missing. And so uh, we started asking her, we started saying, Hey, Micah, are you, are you pulling your hair again? And um, she told us that she wasn't. And um, I tend to ask her multiple times the same, the same question. And when she starts getting frustrated of me asking a question, um, she, she, like, she gets frustrated. She raises her voice a little bit. There's a little bit of that frustration in the voice. And usually when she gets to that point, if the answer is still no or yes, so the answer stays the same through that repeti repetition, usually it's a pretty good indication to me that she's not doing those things. So I, I believed her. I believed her when she said that she wasn't doing it, that maybe just maybe I, it was just a thin spot that was having a hard time growing back out that we never noticed before, all those kinds of things. So she would go to daycare, she would go to preschool, she would um, go to church and just all these different areas. She would go to bed at night, we're watching the monitor and it doesn't look like she's doing any of that. So because we're not seeing her do it and she's telling us that she's not, I'm believing that she's not. So there's that story. Um, on top of that, Micah has now progressed into a new season of life for herself where she no longer just cries if I get angry at her, but she's actually starting to express her emotions, which is fantastic. I love that she's moving into this. Um, so there have been moments where um, she'll say to me, Daddy, I'm feeling sad. Like if I were to do something that she didn't like, she goes, Daddy, that makes me mad. Or she'll say, I don't want to feel mad and that's making me feel mad. Or um, if my wife or I were to get frustrated with her, she kind of shuts down and she says, you're making me feel sad. So it was already bad before when she, like the tears would just start showing up in her eyes when we made her feel sad. But now when we do something and she's vocalizing, verbalizing that we're making her sad, man, and talk about taking that crush feeling to a whole new level because I never want my daughter to feel sad because of something that I did or something that I said to her. Um, and so I say that, I tell you that because of me asking her like, Hey, are you pulling your hair? Like she's starting to verbalize something to us. So I'm just assuming I'm making this assumption that, Hey, if you can verbalize this, then you can. And you do understand that if I ask you this question, that you're going to tell me the truth and uh, say it back to me. <clears throat> well, about a month ago, or actually not even a month ago, it was like a week ago, um, her teacher at preschool, she sent Melissa and I a photo. And she does this on occasion. It's just a way of showing what our kids are up to. And it's like a, a great system of accountability and sharing with us as parents, what they're learning, all that kind of stuff. And lo and behold, what did Melissa and I see? Other than our daughter sitting in class, sucking her thumb, which she's a toddler. Kids are going to do this, and, and I get that. Um but we scroll over to the next picture and what we see is she's holding on to her hair. Uh, and it looks like that she's pulling on it. And in that moment, I was crushed. 
I was devastated. I knew that my wife was um, because I had watched Melissa break down in tears over um, just this habit of hair pooling. Um, again, we don't know why she does this. We just don't. Um, we have some answers, potential answers. We have some reasoning behind it, but we don't know if those are legitimate things. Hence the reason why we go to prayer for this. In fact, I'm recording this after church and uh, Melissa even told me like our, our senior pastor set up such a sweet moment today where we reserve like the last 15 minutes of service just for people to just receive prayer and ask for prayer, whether that was over healing or financial crises or, you know, whatever it was. And Melissa texts me as I was hopping into the VR headset. She says, I went down and asked for prayer over Micah and the hair pool. And I was like, awesome. That's what we're supposed to be doing. We're supposed to be giving this over to God because God cares more about all of this. And we do what breaks our heart also breaks God's heart. God knows what's going on within the mind of that little girl because he's the one that created her. So I love that she did that. And I, but I know that she did that because it just, it tears my wife up on the inside. I'm fully aware of this. So we get that picture and we're both just like, I don't know what to do anymore. I, I, I'm at a loss for words. I don't know how to address this. I don't know what to say. And, uh, I was really glad that this happened while I wasn't around Micah because I probably would have blown up. This probably would have been a blown up moment for me if I would have received that photo while Micah was in the room. And so as the day went on, I had more time to think about it. And I was driving to her school to go pick her up um, after school. And I just asked God, I was like, God, how do I address this with her? Like, how do you want me to address this with my daughter? And so the concept for this podcast episode is really this idea of a free pass. Because um, this is what I felt God say to me. And this is how I addressed it with Micah. <clears throat> I felt God say, ask her. And give her the ability to tell you the truth without her having any kind of consequences attached to it. Um, and I felt like that was so good and such an appropriate response for that moment because I want my daughter to feel comfortable with telling me the truth. Um, I never want her to hide things from me um, in shame or anger or regret or anything like that. I want her to always to be, I always want her to know that dad's a safe place, that dad and mom, you can tell us anything, um, whether it's going to make us sad, upset, angry, happy, whatever it is we want. I want my daughter to know that dad's a safe place to be able to tell me things. Um because what I mean, we all have this experience. There's probably there are things that we have done that we just hope and pray that nobody ever finds out about because of the guilt and shame that we would feel if that ever came to light. And so I get to the school and I'm just sitting in the parking lot waiting for the bell to ring, waiting to go get her. And uh, as we're walking to the truck, um, it was just that idea of like, Mike is getting a free pass on this because I want her to know that she can tell me things without consequences. Now, not all the time. But there are those certain occasions, and I want to reestablish or establish a foundation of dad as a safe space. So I get her into the truck, and I buckle her in, <clears throat> and we get ready to take off. And I said, hey, Micah, can we, can we talk before we leave? And she says, yes. And I said, can I show you something? And she says, yeah. And she loves looking at pictures on my phone. And so I pull open the phone, and I show her the pictures. And she gets all excited, and I ask her, Hey, what's, what's going on in this picture? And she starts telling me about everything that's going on in the picture. But primarily what she's telling me about is her classmates that are in the picture and the activity that they were doing. So I blew the picture up, focusing in on her. And I said, who's that? And she says, it's Micah. And I said, and what's Micah doing? And so this was the picture of her sucking her thumb. And just me asking that question, she shut down. Um, and, and she wears her emotions on her sleeve. So immediately she hunches over and she kind of, she looks down at her feet in the car seat and she won't look at me. And I said, Micah, it's okay. Like, I'm, I'm not mad at you. I just want you to tell me what, what's going on in this picture. And she says, I'm sucking my thumb. I said, are we supposed to be doing that? And she says, no. And I said, okay. I said, I'm going to show you another picture. And she's still pouting at this point, and I get it. And so I scroll over to the next picture, and I say, who is that? She says, it's me. And I said, uh, and, and what are you doing? And she says, I'm pulling my hair. And I said, are you supposed to be pulling your hair? And she says, no. 
And I said, why are you doing it? And she shuts down again. And I said, Micah, you can tell me the truth. It's okay. I want you to tell me the truth. Um, you can tell me what's going on. And she says, I don't want to. And I said, why? And this is a back and forth because why, because why? And finally she says, because I don't want you to be mad at me. And then she says, and I don't want you to be sad. And I was like, oh, okay, here we go. I said, how long has this been going on? And she just says, I've been doing it. And she doesn't fully understand what I'm asking her. She understands enough and I'm piecing together enough. Um, but basically what I'm piecing together is that she's been doing it. Even though we've been asking her, she's been telling us that she hasn't, and I believe her. So now the trust has been broken, but of course, this is a toddler. I'm not expecting her to have some kind of covenant relationship with me just as just of yet or anything like that. You know, I'm, I'm not expecting her to know what lying is or anything. So I'm not holding that against her, but like this trust is now broken because I believed her that when she told me that she wasn't pulling her hair, uh, that she wasn't actually doing it. Um, so I told her, I was like, I'm not mad at you, but I want you to fully understand how this makes daddy feel. This, this hurts me. Um, yes, it upsets me, but, I, but I'm sad because I want you to have long, beautiful hair. Um, I don't want you, I don't want kids picking on you. I don't want any of these negativity things for you. Um, so this is the reason why mommy and daddy get upset when stuff like this happens, because we want something better for you. And I'm just trying to reassure her, hey, I'm not mad. I'm not angry. Like we're, we're going to move past this. So, and what, and what I see in that is really like a discipleship opportunity because yes, I want my daughter to grow up to be an amazing person, but more importantly, I want my daughter to grow up to be like Jesus in the process. And I, that's why I love so much what God was teaching me in that moment was, I was like, you mess up all the time, Stuart. And I'm like, yes, sir, I do. <laughs> um, and he says, and, and I don't hold it against you. Not every single time. There are, there are consequences for actions. We're all very much aware of that. But God doesn't hold it against us all the time. In fact, he doesn't even hold our sin against us all the time. Um, as long as we lay it down at the foot of the cross, Jesus is the one who took on those consequences and that punishment for our sinful, rebellious nature. Um, and so God was reminding me of that, that if I'm going to teach my daughter to be more like Jesus, that also means I have to teach her uh, what grace looks like. Um, and I have to be the walking example of that for her to learn it. So again, parenting, uh, parenting is this weird thing where not only is it parenting for life situations, but it's also discipleship because I want my kids to grow up to be like Jesus. And so what I was teaching Mike in that moment is what grace looks like, that it's okay to be truthful with, with dad. Um, and sometimes there will be consequences and other times I'm just going to give you the free pass to tell me the truth of what's going on so we can address the situation and maybe change what's happening um, so we don't have this reoccurring thing. So here's my encouragement for you today, parents, is this. Offer your kids a free pass. If there's something that's going on that you think you know is happening or you do know that's happening and you just don't know how to address it without getting angry, um, even if your kids were to tell you the truth, my recommendation would be offer your kid a free pass because you'll never be able to address the situation that's going on in their life. You'll never be able to address um, an addiction, a struggle, a pain, sadness that they're going through, um, bullying, anything like that if you don't establish a safe space for them to do it. And sometimes that happens by just offering a free pass and saying, you're not going to get in trouble. I'm not going to blow up. I'm not going to get angry. Now, here's the space. Here's the platform. Is there something that you want to tell me? Can I ask you about this? Whatever it is, however you want to address it. And again, the more important reason for this is you're now establishing a whole new way of revealing to your kids who God is and his character by offering that grace. Okay. Again, I'm not saying that you do that all the time. Because if there is a reoccurring situation, I believe in the idea of consequences. Uh, we have grounded our daughter. We have taken away TV. We have um, disciplined our daughter. Um, I believe in those things for the sake of correcting poor behavior. But at the same time, if all they ever know from you is corporal, corporate punishment, they're never going to tell you the truth. 
because they don't want you to be angry. They don't want the punishment. They don't want whatever comes along with that truth telling. So you have to teach your kids that it's okay to tell the truth. It's okay to come to mom and dad with these situations um, when, when they arise. Because more importantly, what you're doing is you're also teaching that God's a safe space as well. That when they're in need of somebody, they, they'll learn that God's not a God who's waiting to smite them for doing wrong, but they're a God who, our God is a God who understands and offers of grace. So be an example to your kids this week of the characteristic of God of being that grace giver and offer your kids an opportunity for a free pass to address the situation that's going on in their lives um, so you can get to the root cause of what's going on and establish a whole new um, relationship or new a whole new aspect of a relationship between you and your kid. Um, because if all they ever know is you getting angry at them, they're only going to be driven further away from you and they'll look for an answer They'll look for comfort. They'll look for those kinds of things that they're, that they're in need of from someplace else. But it might as well be you. So that's my encouragement for you this week. Learn from my failures, from my struggles. Um, please be praying for us as we walk this uh, season out with Micah, with her uh, getting back to the air pulling. Like we're trying to redirect once again, and we're praying about this. Um trying to figure out answers for it and all that kind of stuff. But uh, if you'd be praying for us on that, we would definitely appreciate it as a family. And again, as always, if there's anything I could be praying for you about, uh, about, or you just need somebody in your corner, I would love to be that person for you. Um, all that being said, I will draw this episode to a conclusion. So as always, if this is a blessing to you, please be sure to leave a rating and review. Subscribe to this and share it with others. All those kinds of things helps get this podcast out to more people. Um, and uh, I'll be back next week. Oh, I also wanted to tell you, if you ever want to, uh, you, you may know if you're a listener of this podcast, you also may know that I've got another podcast on the side that I'm doing with a good friend of mine doing um, Metaverse Church podcast. So we're talking about everything about what the church is doing in the Metaverse, which is like virtual reality gaming, all that kind of stuff. But if you ever want access to um, the blogs or the podcast, anything like that, um, let me encourage you, hop over to the website, stuartmcpherson.org. And at the bottom um, is a section that you can fill out and it's called Be Blessed Newsletter. This is something that I'm going to be doing. This is going to basically be a, here's all of my content for the week in a one snapshot with a word of encouragement, all that kind of stuff. And you can sign up for that just by subscribing. And I'm going to be launching um, this newsletter soon. Um, so if you want to be a part of that, just head over to Stuart McPherson. Org, uh, fill out that information there. There you'll be able to find all of the other blogs that ran, all the other podcasts, all that kind of stuff. But it's just a one stop shop for you to be able to get something that will drop to your uh, inbox. Um, I think weekly is the process, is the plan right now. So, interested in any of that, you can just hop over there. But all that being said, until next week, be blessed.